Trayvon Diggs led the league in interceptions last year with 11, which was the most anyone has ever had since 1981. So very impressive stat. He was an all pro because of it, but there's a lot of criticism he's received as well. On one hand, his passer rating against was very good. 117th most, which is also known as 13th best in the league in terms of passer rating against, but there's other numbers that aren't so promising. Pro Football Focus rated him as their 54th rated corner. So why was he, uh, according to them, a mediocre number two corner, whereas he had so much interceptions and was, according to passer rating against, a mediocre number one corner? Well, this is the first stat. He led the league in these two numbers. What these two numbers are, are passing yards against. He was the only corner to give up over a thousand yards last year. And also he gave up 18.7 yards per uh, catch, which is also the most in football. So those two numbers, not quite as impressive. And this is where the interesting debate comes in with Trayvon Diggs. Do we sit here and say, well, he got the interceptions and the good outweighs the bad, so who cares? Or do we go with the other aspect and say the good did not outweigh the bad and interceptions in general just have a, an element of flukiness to them? This tweet I found interesting. This is from uh, Seth Walder, who uh, this was in mid-October, so this is not towards the end of the year. We, I do not have the numbers for the end of the year, but opponents recorded a minus 37.2 EPA when targeting Trayvon Diggs uh, as the nearest defender this season per NFL Next Gen stats, minus 37. That's twice as much production as the nearest defender in as any other player in football. So as in when it comes to coverage, he had the best, at least at a certain point last year, and over double the next closest player. I'm not sure how much that continued, but it does go to show that perhaps there is some good outweighing the bad. However, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let's watch some films. So first, what we're going to do is look over right here. So you see where Trayvon Diggs is. I think watching film is a great way to just kind of understand who a player is and kind of how they operate. Obviously, you got to look at the numbers, too. You don't want to just look at film. You don't want to just look at numbers. You want to look at both. Uh, and the film is a very interesting case study. And what Trayvon Diggs really does, that can be an, an issue at times. This is going to be an example. He's playing this cover three zone that the Cowboys love to run. This is that Dan Quinn defense. And you see where he is supposed to cover. He is supposed to cover that deep zone uh, to the offense's left. You have a defender who's going up one-on-one -on -one against him. And really watch what happens on this move. Look, as you see, so what the wide receiver is going to do is he kind of fakes as though he's going over the middle a little bit. Also, I might have called him a defender earlier. If I did, obviously I meant wide receiver. Uh, anyways, you see how when he kind of cuts as though maybe he's going over the middle or just cutting back, you see how far Diggs you know, bites on this. Diggs bites on every move. Just period. He does. He gets boot, beat on a double move every time. Time there is a double move. That's almost and just something that he says he's okay with doing. That's part of his strategy in a way. As you see, then when the receiver, not the defender, runs further deep, there's enough of a separation for him to make the catch. And while Diggs did not give up too much separation, that still wasn't horrible coverage. He kind of had to turn his back because he had already gotten beat, so he couldn't turn his head around to see where the ball was. So that's not a horrible play, but he does tend to get beat on those pretty consistently, which was how he gave up a decent amount of yards. You also have something like this. This was in the playoff game where Brandon Ayuk gave him a little bit of trouble in this one. Kind of a similar situation. It's essentially a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but if you're Diggs, you know you have help over the middle. Right when this play begins, you're going to see Brandon Ayuk eventually cut over the middle, and once again, you see how far Diggs cuts in to cover him, which it's hard to blame him. Like I don't, I don't have an issue with this coverage whatsoever. It's just, I guess, more so maybe the fair critique to give to Diggs. It takes him a little bit longer to get back going on the other side. I mean, look at how when Ayuk cuts back. It's a great move by Ayuk, but that's as open as you see anybody get. Garoppolo also missed the throw, kind of funnily enough. But, I mean, that's an incredible route by Ayuk, but you really see Diggs getting burned, and he gets burned like that pretty frequently, but that's part of the strategy, right? He's going to bite on your first move. It will allow him to jump some routes, but it, the flip side is it's going to cause you to get burnt sometimes, and it's not a horrible strategy. If you can get 11 interceptions every year, it's probably a great strategy, you know? And listen, there definitely were plays where it really paid off for him. 
I think something like this is a perfect example of when he's working at his best, this is how he can do it. It's a little bit different of a coverage. It's going to be actually man on this one, but it's essentially the same idea where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside where the receiver he's going up against uh, that, you know, could get open towards the sideline. There's only a single safety deep, so that's what you're looking at here. And just as a quick sidebar, that's also part of why I think that Diggs has just given up so many yards is because he's kind of been put in a situation where he doesn't get safety help too often. So scheme is going to come into play, of course, as it always comes into play when we're talking football, right? When this play begins, you do see how Diggs, again, very aggressive in cutting in, but this time there is no double move. This time this is where the throw is going, and you better believe Sam Darnold is still going to make this throw. That's what Sam Darnold does. Darnold makes the throw, and Diggs does a great job at stepping in front, and he has great ball skills to allow him to get a touchdown, or not get a touchdown, get an interception, excuse me, a touchdown would have been impressive on that one, but still very impressive getting the interception, and that's part of what I like about Diggs, this is a legit good quality that you can't take away from him, the reality is quarterbacks are gonna throw the ball in an area where a defender can get it from time to time, even good corner, even good quarterbacks, and for someone like Diggs who can make you pay, that's part of what football is, is it's not necessarily about not making mistakes sometimes, sometimes it's about capitalizing on mistakes. That's what Jimmy Garoppolo didn't do when Diggs got burned earlier by missing the throw, but Diggs, in this scenario, does capitalize on the mistake by getting the uh, interception. I guess one thing you could argue is he doesn't do it as much as you might think. So this stat is fascinating. This is where Trayvon Diggs ranked in terms of pass breakups per target. Kind of an interesting stat. So how often are you targeted? And then, you know, uh, based on that uh, amount, how often are, should you, do you get a pass breakup? And for Diggs, he gets a pass breakup a decent amount of the time. It's about 11 uh, targets for every pass breakup he will get, which is 38th in football, but that's not 38th best, that's 38th worst. And this is out of about 120 uh, cornerback. So he's actually on the bottom half of the league in terms of this stat. So he does not do a great job at breaking up the pass when he is targeted. So that's something that's very much worth noting. But again, it's less about the pass breakups and more about the interceptions with him. He might not get a ton of pass breakups, but what he does do is turn them into interceptions, which is where the math changes a little bit. One more stat, Diggs finished 66th last year among quarterbacks in PFF war. What that stat is, it's a little bit different than EPA. So uh, I can talk about the differences in a second and which one we should pay the most attention to. But for Diggs, the reason why this is a fascinating stat is what they basically do is on every play say, if you're a replacement quality corner, just someone thinks whoever would be the next guy on the depth chart on an average team, that guy gets called up would the play have gone differently? And if the play does go differently, then you simply just log how it would have gone differently. So for example, if Diggs gets an interception for a touchdown, uh, when an average corner would have probably given up a 10 yard completion, well then you say, okay, how much points did that give us? It's a seven point swing or whatever. So we're gonna, you know, Diggs' uh, points value goes up seven points and then you can adjust the points to wins and that's how that stat works. It's a fun stat. Uh, Diggs was 66th in PF War last year. There's obviously flaws in this stat because we're talking about football and it's a stat, so there's going to be some flaws in it regardless. But I think it's, it, again, I've always been a believer in statistics do a great job at telling you what they're supposed to tell you. You might take it the wrong way, and I might take it the wrong way. I do that plenty of times uh, on accident. But uh, a stat does a great job at telling you what it's supposed to tell you. It's your job to just figure out how to interpret that correctly. And for a stat like this, I think that what it tells me is that a lot of those interceptions, and I went back and watched a lot of the interceptions, they weren't all because he was doing great. In fact, some of them were even he was getting burned on it, and it was a bad throw that allowed him to get intercepted, uh, you know, allowed him to get the interception. He was targeted a ton last year. That's part of why he got so many interceptions, also part of why he gave up so many yards, and maybe, you know, I just think that that's, it's all worth mentioning with him. We have to, you know, there's nuance with Diggs. We can't just say he's awesome or he sucks because neither one of those things are true. The reality is 11 interceptions is 11 interceptions. I went back and looked at a lot of the guys who have gotten 10 interceptions over the course of a season, and they're not all great players, but most of them are like Hall of Famers, like, or at least a good chunk of them are Hall of Famers. So it's not like this is just a complete luck stat, and it's not like it's, you know, something I don't pay attention to whatsoever. That's legitimately good, 
And a lot of those interceptions, yes, yeah, sure, some of them were fluky, but that's just going to happen in football. Some of them were him being great, and kind of like what I talked about, part of it is you make your own luck. Yes, there was some flukiness with some of these throws, but he also had the ball skills to take advantage of something like that. So again, the uh, the EPA versus PFF war is, I don't know how many people are super interested in, in this kind of discussion, but I think it's actually a, a very fascinating discussion and worth mentioning is, Remember what EPA does, and I still don't know his full season EPA, so I couldn't find out. So I don't know if it ended up being still that good, but let's just assume it was still very good. All EPA does is talk about results. If you, if a quarterback just, you know, underhand throws one right to Diggs, who makes the catch and runs for a touchdown, now the EPA is going to be way in Diggs' favor, which means that that's, you know, going to make his EPA look better, whereas a PFF war would say, well, anyone would have done that, so we're not going to give you extra credit for that, which is why, some, you know, there's such a disparity there, I think. Um, there's the other aspect involved here as well, which is, uh, you know, and I think that this is, you know, I mean, I, okay, granted, I guess one thing I should say as well is it can go both ways. Um, you know, if Diggs gets burned on a great route, that's still, they're not going to hold it against him as well. So it kind of does go both ways. But uh, there's the other factor here as well, which is Diggs is not a finished product. He's in year two. And one of the things he can do is just not bite in as much. Like, I think it seems like that's kind of the obvious fix to me. I do think that you have to change up how he's going to play. I just do. I think he has to pull it back a little. That's, I could be wrong. Maybe this is how he'll just play and how he'll, you know, be successful. But even with all of these interceptions, I just don't know if it's going to consistently work this way. And maybe you try it. Maybe you say, let's give it another, you know, year, see how it works. And if it's week six and it's still not working, then you say, okay, let's maybe try to, you know, not bite in on every move, try to take it back a little bit. I don't think Diggs is a bad asset. I don't think he's a bad player. Uh, he is someone who's fascinating, but... Like how would I def how good would I define him? Who would I want to trade if I want to trade for him? What would I give up? I really don't know. That's a tough situation. He's such a unique player that we don't have a ton of sample size of guys like him that I don't feel comfortable saying one way or the other. And another thing about corners in general is they just they're weird. Corners are weird. They're hard to evaluate. One year they're great, one year they're horrible, and they you know there's seemingly no reason for it. So. Uh, it's, it's already so fluky that maybe you just say, yeah, he's got great ball skills and he's a good athlete. So I'll just draft him or not draft him, but I'll just, you know, pay him or whatever. And honestly, that's not the worst logic in the world with such an important position. That's also so fluky. So that's kind of what I think about all this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.